Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Wow, Bitcoin under $20,000 once again. Right now, uh, Bitcoin's trading at $19,800. Over the last uh, few days, we have seen some downward momentum for Bitcoin. Here, if I throw it on the hourly, we can see it a little better here. Um, and so, you know, right now we're hovering below that 20,000 mark, which is, um, I mean, for all intents and purposes, just a psychological level, but it's getting people fairly spooked. Um, we did go down as low as 19,005. And so, uh, now we're holding 19,008. Um, and again, we could go down further. I mean, it's not out of the cards. Bitcoin, it seems like it's holding support by a thread here. Um, but again, guys, you know, this is par for the course for crypto. Right now, we're kind of holding this top level here, uh, this old resistance level that we saw from way back in December of 2017 when Bitcoin reached its all-time high. This is a significant level because it did form the old all-time high way back then. And now, um, you know, we're trying to keep above that. But we will see because the other thing... That we have to pay attention to is that, um, you know, in the past we have seen corrections here. Let me show you guys. On the former bull run for Bitcoin, we have seen corrections of, uh, you know, up to 80, 85% for the top cryptocurrency. And um, so far we have only corrected roughly about 75%. So again, an 85% correction, or rather an 80% correction, give or take, would take us back to about 13,800, which would uh, bring us back to this resistance level that we saw back in mid-June. So throwing it back on the hourly, you guys can see this here. Uh, over the weekend, we did see a slump for Bitcoin. Hopefully it does hold up. And it seems as though the rest of the crypto market has felt the blow as well. This is XRP on the hourly. Right now, XRP is trading at about 32.3. So uh, it has also seen that decline in price since the 26th of August, even after we saw this unexpected pump here bringing XRP up to 37 cents. So it's right back down to 32 cents. Of course, this is just the ebbs and flows of the market as the market sways back and forth. In the grand scheme of things, though, guys, it's just trader sentiment right now in a speculative market since we do not have that real world utility that we are longing for for XRP. Um, in other news, guys, I saw this from Crypto Eddie on Twitter. How long will this newly revised article by Dr. Layton stay up? So apparently, um, I talked the other day a little bit about uh, this article that was put up by Forbes magazine. It was Rosalind Layton who posted uh, the original article. And, uh, you know, the XRP community really wanted to play a part in spreading this article far and wide after Forbes decided to take it down. So I had uh, posted some links in yesterday's video where you could uh, download it from a Dropbox. And here's the Dropbox. I'm also going to post it in uh, the description of today's video. Gary Gensler resigned. This was the original article here. And, uh, you know, it wasn't too kind to Gary Gensler, the head over there at the SEC. And I feel like the XRP community was feeling like we have been justified by, um, you know, when, when this article was published because... Our story, you know, it's getting out there in drips and drabs, but it's very difficult to be getting our point out there, uh, I guess, to the extent that we want it out there. Now, here was the revised article. So the article was apparently put back up. Gary Gensler says crypto treated just like the market. 200 SEC lawsuits say otherwise. Apparently, Rosalind Layton had to revise this article. And so this is a uh, nicer, I guess, kinder, <laughs> less combative article uh, towards Gary Gensler. This was posted as a replacement to that original article. Uh, and I will leave this here in the description of the video as well if you guys are interested. Crypto Eddie basically says here, based on the last paragraph, that is the reason she was given for the removal of her prior article. So in the original article here, just going down to the last paragraph, uh, you can see she was not afraid to pull any punches. Gary Gensler did further subterfuge at the 2021 Aspen Securities Forum by falsely claiming that Howie is a three-part test when it was in fact a four-part test. This rewrite of history conveniently eliminates Howie's critical fourth prong of investment contract, which if included contradicts the SEC's invented legal theory in Ripple and the Library case. And then she writes, the SEC under the Gensler disrespects Congress and the courts and imperils investors and innovators. Gensler is leading himself and the SEC into ruin. He should resign now and avoid further damage. Um, well, some of this has been rewritten here in this article. 
And um, you guys can see here, uh, what should the SEC do? The SEC was founded, and so it gives just kind of a brief description of uh, when the SEC was founded and why it was founded. However, the SEC's own actions to regulate by enforcement are a kind of manipulation through arbitrary and capricious decisions and lack of process and rules. Indeed, some 90% of the SEC cases are settled rather than concluded in court. So, you know, the wording here, just a little bit more soft, I guess you could say, softer. Uh, there are hundreds of SEC lawyers tasked with prosecuting companies for failure to follow rules that Gensler says exist, but which cannot be found on the SEC.gov's website. Gensler can protect investors through transparency. Crypto actors have begged Congress and the SEC for clear rules for years, but it has not happened. Gensler has been on the job for a year and a half. It's time to get this done. So... Um, polished, you know, um, presented in a way now that is a little uh, less fighting and a little more tame, a little more granola. You know, I think the uh, XRP community preferred the first article, but um, I'm sure for political reasons, Forbes decided to take this down. And, um, you know, here are the two articles. I'm going to leave them both in the description of the video. Just wanted to bring this up because now I have no doubt that there are some kind of politics going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, so much so that Forbes can't even write an independent article about the SEC from their journalistic perspective, um, criticizing Gary Gensler. They had to polish it up. They had to kind of soften it up to say, you know, not to necessarily say he's right. So they're still, I guess, technically being critical, but, you know, polishing it so that it, um, sounds a little nicer, I suppose. Anyway, don't want to dwell on that too much. Jungle Inc. bringing this to our attention now. This is Esther Peirce, one of the commissioners at the SEC. And, you know, even to her, she said this on the record, even to her, the Howey test is unclear, not just with crypto assets, but even with traditional assets. Listen to what she says here. Bad news is that we do have a history of, of cases and law that grew up around this so-called Howey test. Uh, and it's not... It's not clear with other kinds of assets either. It's not always clear. Sometimes it's very obvious which side of the line something falls on. But other times when you're talking about um, real estate, for example, it could actually, uh, purchasing a condo could actually be a securities transaction. So trying to figure out those lines in other contexts can also be quite difficult. So even purchasing a condo, according to Hester Peirce, from the SEC could in fact be considered a securities uh, contract. But, um, you know, we're, we're still in this situation where there is no clarity and cryptos certainly are in the middle of this big mess with the SEC. I hope we get this cleared up very soon. Wanted to thank Jungle Inc. for posting that. Guys, this also from XRP Crypto Wolf. Okay, apparently global crypto adoption has now exceeded 320 million users worldwide. This is according to a study. Here's the country leading the charge. So a new study from the digital assets payment firm revealed that hundreds of millions of people around the globe are using cryptocurrency. So this I'm sure up quite a bit over the last several years. Singapore based triple A says the firm gathered data uh, from more than a dozen reports uh, uh, and sur sorry, and surveys to obtain the most encompassing and accurate set of statistics for the study. According to the firm's research, global uh, crypto ownership rates stood at an average of 4.2% of the year, translating to more than 320 million digital asset users worldwide. Leading the charge of global crypto adoption is the United States, despite the lack of clarity, with 46 million users, followed by India and Pakistan with 27 million and 26 million users, respectively. By continent, the study reveals that Asia is ahead of the curve with 130 million crypto users. Africa grabs the second spot with 53 million crypto users, followed by North America's 51 million crypto users. And I guess that would comprise of uh, Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So um, the United States, though, as a country, leading the pack with 46 million users. And, um, you know, if this does not scream U.S., make your adoption make sense so that crypto companies can flourish in the United States. I don't know what does, um, you know, because there are other countries on the forefront of this technology. And um, do we really want to relinquish power to China? I mean, it is interesting to see, though, um, that we are seeing this adoption really grow. According to the study, the growth of crypto users since 2014 appears to be following the trajectory of Internet adoption in the 1990s. So, guys, here's just another little chart here. Internet versus crypto adoption. And you guys can see uh, that trajectory has been continuing um, more or less at the same rate 
since internet adoption back in uh, back in 1990, 91, 92, 93, you guys can see uh, very low usage at that time. And now we're kind of at the same point of uh, 1998 with the internet when uh, more people were getting in to the internet at that point. I think that was, I feel like that was when I started using the internet more often, 1998 using it, getting online with friends, but it wasn't really a big part of my life. It was a very, very, very small part of my life. And I think uh, people of my age group would say the same at that point. And so now we're in 2022, crypto adoption, um, you know, part of some of our lives, but not to the extent that it will be in the coming decade. Let's not forget 1998, very different than 2008, and 2008 very different than 2018 in terms of the internet. So, you know, 2022 is going to be different than 2032, is going to be different than 2042 with regards to cryptocurrency adoption. I guess the whole point here being as the years go on, we're just going to see more adoption for crypto, which uh, definitely does suggest that, uh, you know, holding some cryptocurrencies for the long term may be a good decision. Obviously, that's not financial advice, but, um, you know, I plan on doing that that's why i have my cash out plan here's a sample cash out plan that i created uh, a couple of years ago now you can put your cryptocurrency here in the left hand side and uh, you can uh, fill in these values accordingly like how much you have and what your target prices are and uh, so these are all customizable and what the sheet will do is it will uh, actually populate the spreadsheet uh, so that if you are to keep 50% of your crypto and cash out 50% of your crypto at these targets, this would be how much you would uh, you would have at the end of the day. And so I've made it so that you can uh, change it to 55%, 60, 65, 70, all the way from 20% uh, up to 90% of your cryptocurrency. So this is the uh, the general spreadsheet. I also wanted to mention that uh, Kerry from App Labs, he created the cash out plan, the working money channel cash out plan uh, for Android and iPhone users. So you guys can download it both if you are an Apple or Android user. It's a free app to download. Uh, I do not make any money off this. He, uh, we, you know, we collaborated. He said, uh, I want to, I want to create this app based on your plan. And so he did. So that's available for download too. Want to keep moving because we've also got some news coming out of the Binance camp. James Anthony posting this breaking Visa, MasterCard and Binance are making XRP payments a reality. And it's not just XRP payments, guys. They are allowing payments through more cryptocurrencies through this MasterCard partnership. So payments giant MasterCard has announced a partnership with Binance, the world's biggest cryptocurrency exchange to launch cryptocurrency payments in store and online this announcement is confirmed by the ceo and as stated earlier it will include xrp uh so bitcoin ethereum xrp solana cardano and tether so um those are the payment cryptocurrencies that uh, will be accepted Binance has lately been on the offense looking to grow their platform shortly before the MasterCard announcement. They have also announced a partnership with the city of Busan, South Korea. Uh, also good to note that XRP has many gigantic banking partners in Korea, such as Shinhan and Wuri Bank. So just another update here with regards to Binance. But the big partnership with payments giant MasterCard, huge news here, making uh, payments through XRP a reality. Of course, we also know that Visa, MasterCard's uh, competitor, they are Ripple enabled through Earthport. So not necessarily making cryptocurrency payments through a Visa card with XRP, but indirectly through that Earthport connection. So we're starting to see more value added to the XRP ledger through these two big credit card companies. Wanted to thank uh, James Anthony here just for posting that. Wrath of Kahneman also bringing us an interesting tweet thread with regards to uh, a few companies here that are Ripple enabled. Okay, so C Group owns Shopee and Garena Games. C Group and Ripple did also invest in Forte, if you guys uh, remember that partnership there. Ripple and Tranglo built a platform for Shopee SG. Forte's Payco PTI handles KYC. Uh, and Rally, a creator platform, uses PTI. Rally mentions Shopee as part of their Asian expansion. So some interesting connections, all connecting to Ripple and the XRP ledger. And so uh, Wrath of Kahneman also just posts his uh, his resources here with these articles uh, taking place over the last uh, few years now. So an interesting connection once you know all the partnerships and how all these companies are connected. And just to give you guys a sense, uh, Shopee, they are an e-commerce company with over 20,000 employees. So they are a Singaporean multinational technology company, which specializes in e-commerce, over 20,000 employees. And uh, also just to put things into perspective with regards to Forte and the video gaming industry, the global video game market size was estimated at about $195.65 billion. Yes, that's billion with a B in 2021 and is expected to reach about 220 0.79 billion in 2022. So um, right now we're about uh, three quarters of the way 
through 2022, and they are already expected to go up to $220 billion, over $220 billion in 2022. So, you know, gaming is um, very big. I think the largest form of entertainment, and as you can see, uh, Ripple has uh, already partnered with video gaming companies and is looking for a foothold in the video gaming industry, along with uh, e-commerce and other industries, obviously, being part of the verticals that they are expanding to. Anyway, interesting news here. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. And did you see this, guys? Brad Garlinghouse had to come out and say, that he cannot comment on the validity of this next story, which is kind of strange, I got to admit, um, of the slew. Okay, so he says, I can't comment on the validity of the slew of allegations in here, but I can unequivocally say that I have never met or spoken to, much less invested in, Kyle Roche. So apparently it was suggested that uh, Brad Garlinghouse invested in this company to take down other cryptocurrencies with legal lawsuits um, and I don't know for what reason, I don't know if this would necessarily help Ripple in any way, but th it was suggested that this is what he was doing, okay? And Brad Garlinghouse uh, just posted a little, uh, a little blurb from this article. Before Kyle Roche founded Roche Friedman and made a pact with Ava Labs, he was a relatively lowly associate at the firm, law firm Boys, Schiller, and Flexner. Uh, they were representing Ripple, who were defending a lawsuit claiming their XRP token was an illegal security. According to Kyle, he proposed to their CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, that he create a new law firm that would specialize in suing others in crypto using exactly the same kinds of tactics that were being used against Ripple. Kyle asked that Brad come in as his angel investor, and curiously, Brad agreed. One might have expected he would want to see less of this kind of litigation across the industry. And uh, so this is purporting that Brad Garlinghouse did, in fact... Uh, join in uh, and invest in this company. Sounds like FUD to me. Uh, here are just a couple of clips uh, of Kyle Roche, okay? Stating what he was doing and how he uh, started the company, there are a couple of short clips. I'm just going to play you guys these just for some context here. So I started my law firm uh, August, move into the co-working space August 2009, August 1, 2019. I... Um, the same day Ava Labs launches on the same co-workers. Goon and I knew each other because of <coughs> academic writing. And so Goon, immediately the first thing, <coughs> Goon, I'm in Goon Sire, the CEO of Ava Labs. Okay, so just giving you guys some context there. Uh, I'm going to play you guys this second clip here too. Kevin Seknick, he's the COO. I'm in Goon Sire, the CEO. There are five employees in a co-working spot right next to us. Well. Um, Goon, uh, we did a deal where I agreed to provide legal services in exchange for a certain percentage of the token supply. Uh, September, that was September 2019. And so you worked originally with AB uh, all of us at the early stage? The earliest. Yeah, yeah. I was the first. Yeah. I was the first, uh, besides Andreessen Horowitz, I was the first yeah. person on their cap table. Yeah. So it sounds like this guy, Kyle Roche, uh, does indeed talk. Uh, I mean, there are a few clips here. I will leave this in the description. I'm not going to play them all for you. But he does uh, indeed talk as though he did uh, create this company that was out to sue other crypto companies. Um, but, you know, even if maybe some of this story is true, which uh, I'm not saying it is 100%, uh, Brad Garlinghouse has come out on Twitter on the record saying, you know, he does not know who Kyle Roche is. Uh, never spoken to him, never met him, much less invested in this company. Uh, XRP Crypto Wolf <laughs> saying the only thing that seemed real about the allegations in this article were the videos. And I mean, the videos do seem quite uh, compelling. I mean, again, I don't know uh, how much of this is true, how much of it is not true. But apparently, you know, the Ava Labs guys came together with this guy and uh, formed a conspiracy where they were going to uh, sue other crypto companies. Uh, XRP Crypto Wolf goes on to say, as usual, competitors just want to spread FUD about Ripple and XRP. I do not disagree. I'm feeling like the FUD campaign has actually ramped up over the last uh, couple of weeks now. I don't know why. Maybe we're getting so close to the end of this lawsuit that, uh, you know, some of these crypto companies are saying, oh, we're running out of time. Uh, we got to do we got to do something to keep Ripple down. But I mean, it doesn't really make sense if it was the crypto companies. Maybe the big banking cartel is behind this in the U.S., I don't know. Even John Deaton is saying, you know, great example to not believe everything you read. I read this yesterday and said to myself, there is no way a high profile CEO of a 10 to $15 billion fintech company expecting to IPO and go public in the next one to three years is going to bankroll a law firm to sue others 
in the same industry. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, the story, a little flat, actually a lot flat. And, um, you know, again, Brad Garlinghouse has come out and said the same. Jim here saying, you know, the amount of FUD against this company is something else. Grown men will weep. James Nova down here saying, no, no, the thing is, this article says so. So you see, it has to be true. He's being facetious here, obviously. Because if it's written down, then it must be unequivocally true. Um, yeah, it's a crazy story, I gotta say. Doesn't really bode well for AVAX. So, you know, we're only getting this in drips and drabs. Don't have the full story yet, but I will update you if I hear more. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.